Hi sweet friends, today we're starting vegetable and herb seeds indoors using the Jiffy Greenhouse Seed Starter Kit. So if you've ever been wondering how to grow a garden or want to try this year, come along with me and experiment with me. So last year we decided we wanted to start a vegetable garden. We did have one at our old home, but we wanted to try one at this home. And we thought last year was a perfect time to start. Growing our own food would help us to eliminate so many trips to the grocery store or being in the grocery store for longer than needed. With the prices of produce rising, we're having to wait in long lineups. We had to wait in lineups for plants. We decided to grow them from seeds this year to eliminate all of that. And then a benefit to that is that we also know what's going into our food. We know exactly what we're eating. And it actually costs you less to plant the seeds yourself than to buy the actual plants if that's what you were thinking of doing. Let me take you on the journey of creating our garden last year. So that means digging up the grass on either side of our yard. Then we worked in some triple mix soil to make the ground a little bit more workable and less clay-like. So one side of our garden was pretty much okay. The other side was a little bit more clay-like and kind of caked on soil. And so we had to kind of loosen that soil up a little bit because plants do like loose soil. So we're calling this our garden experiment because we're still really novice gardeners. Even though we've been gardening for uh, quite a good while now, um, quite a few years, um, we're still we're still experimenting and we're still learning and so I hope you come along on this journey with me this is the first video in this series and well, I will be updating you as we go along so this year we're going to be planting with this Jiffy tomato greenhouse and I picked this one up at Lowe's it's the large size so it's it says it's for tomatoes but you could use it for any seeds and I'll link it down below in case you were interested in picking one up. You can click on the link below. Um, just a disclaimer, I do make a small commission when you purchase from my link, but it does not cost you anything. And I always will stand by everything that I am showing you and linking down below. So you know I'm using it myself and I highly recommend it. So after watching a few YouTube videos, I decided to give this method a try. Okay, so I've just opened my Jiffy um, peat pellet starter kit. Okay, and here's the clear dome that you're gonna use to cover the seed, uh, seeds once you've planted them. Okay, so I'll just put that aside. And then we have the peat pellets here and they're dried and compressed. What we're going to do is we're going to place a few of them in a bowl. You don't want to overcrowd them because they will get pretty big once they start uh, puffing up. Soak them in boiling hot water. They might contain fungus gnats, eggs, and so the boiling water helps to kill them. I'm just gonna wanna cover this till it's about, just about covered the top of it. Okay, and you can see it's starting to fluff up already. So for this size of bowl, you might not want to put as many as I did. I put about eight in here. You might want to just do four, um, four to six, but I would recommend four. Okay, so while that's soaking up the water, I'm going to put four pellets into this bowl this time. You can see the, the Jiffy container comes with 36 pallets, so you can plant 36 plants into it. Okay, so we've got four here. I'm just gonna open them out. Again, I'm gonna cover them with some water really quickly. Okay, 
and just be careful when you're working with it because it's really hot. Okay. All right. So we're going to take these completed ones here and they look like this. So this is the bottom. It's all sealed off and then it's got a hole on the top where you can plant. Okay, so we're just, I'm just taking them and placing them back into the container where I got them from. Okay, and then we're gonna let this cool off completely before we plant the seeds in them. Uh, right now they're a little bit warm, a little bit hot, but um, they're okay to touch and then they do cool off quickly. While my peat pellets are cooling off, I'm gonna show you what seeds I will be planting. I'm going to be planting these Tiny Tim uh, cherry tomatoes. They're tiny tomatoes and they grow in clusters. So they're great for salads. This is an heirloom variety. They say heirloom on it. And heirloom is just any seeds that um, have stood the test of time. So about 50 to 75 years, as I understand it. Um, as long as you take the seed from this plant, and grow it again next year, you will get the exact same tomato fruit um, on the plant. So um, a lot of my vegetable seeds are heirlooms. So if I wanted, I could just save the seeds and that's something I might be doing. So stick around and subscribe if you wanna see that. Um, and let me know if you wanna see that because uh, that's something that I'll be experimenting with as well at the end of the season in fall. Okay, then I bought some tomato bonnie best and all of these that I looked for, these are heirloom. I tried to look for heirloom, first of all, and um, then if they weren't heirloom, they were just um, early fruit bearers. So they would give us fruit early because here in Canada, we only have about like a little bit like the end of May, June, July, and August and then it starts getting cold again so we don't have a very long growing season um, so I wanted something that would produce fast so there's heirloom okay the peppers are not heirloom these are red bell peppers uh, so we love bell peppers and we're gonna try this out this year last year we had um, Hungarian hot wax they kind of look like banana peppers I think they were banana peppers they were very prolific very easy to grow, so if you want something that's easy to grow, they were hot, a little bit hot, but not not uh, really, really hot. I would say kind of like jalapeno hot or a little bit less than jalapeno hot. So that's a great one to, to get if you really want something that's easy to grow and prolific. You can also pickle those when you're done with them in the fall. Okay, then I have um, beans. And these are the bush kinds. So the bush beans, I don't know if my camera's focusing on that, but they grow instead of on a vine, uh, they grow in a bush. And these are the stringless beans, okay? And they're also heirlooms, so I can save the seeds from these as well. I'll also be growing dark green zucchini. Now I read um, online that they're pretty resilient to pests but um, I will still be watching for that. Last year we could only get the yellow zucchini and uh, I don't normally grow that one. So that was our first time doing that. And I did find, and I don't know if this will happen again, but I did find that we got a lot of cucumber beetles and they're a kind of beetle that kind of eat the plant, eat the leaves and um, eat the, the fruit. And normally they don't do um, I don't think they do much harm, except that when they lay their eggs, they have some sort of, I don't know, some kind of something on a hormone, something like that. And then that causes the plant to wilt. Okay, then I have some cucumbers. Um, these are a, uh, not an heirloom variety. The zucchini was an heirloom, but these are a hybrid. Um, so they're the Lebanese type. Uh, I guess it's called Bait Alpha Burpless. I don't know. This is my first time growing it. It does look like English cucumbers, but they're not English cucumbers. And it does say that it's resilient to downy mildew, powdery mildew, and cucumber mosaic virus, which are a type of mildew that discolors the leaves. So 
Um, at least they'll be resilient to that. And then we can deal with the cucumber beetles in a different way. And I'm gonna show you later on when we put it in the garden, what I'm going to be doing to combat that uh, cucumber beetle problem. Okay, then I have some herbs here. I'm gonna be planting tarragon. This is gonna be my first year planting tarragon. I love herbs. I use, I use herbs a lot in my cooking. Um, and you're gonna see that coming up in some of my recipes. I do use a lot of herbs. Um, sage, this is something that has grown on me over the years um, in taste and I do like using this now uh, with different meats. Um, parsley, we'll also be growing parsley. Now parsley is a biennial. Sage and tarragon, I believe tarragon is a perennial. Yes, tarragon is a perennial, sage is a perennial. Um, Parsley is a biennial, so it grows for two years and then it stops. So this is an heirloom variety, so you can keep the seeds. And when it stops growing, the second year, uh, the third year, you can plant uh, the seeds for the parsley again. Okay, basil. This is the sweet basil, and this is also heirloom. These are an annual. Basils are annuals, and um, that's fine. But I do plant this every year. I usually buy the plant. But this time I'm going to try it from seed. Um, later on you're going to see me plant some more seeds but directly into the garden. Now the pea pellets have cooled off completely and I have my daughter here with me so uh, that's something I recommend if you can get your kids involved that would be great because this makes a great experiment for them and they love planting things. My daughter has always loved planting things with me and getting there in the garden. So you're going to see her a lot in my gardening videos. It's just a wonderful thing to get them involved in. It's very hands-on. They love it. Um, and it's like an experiment for them. They can plant it and watch what they've planted grow and grow and become a plant that also can nourish them. Okay, so we're just going to open up. We're going to start with these tomatoes. These are the uh, bonnie vest. Okay, and we're going to put about um, either two or three in each of these pellets. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the best plant. So you're going to take the best uh, uh, seedling, the strongest one, and um, you're going to plant that one in the ground. And then you're going to you know, pull out the the um, ones that are not as strong. So I'm just gonna do one and show you. So you're going to just um, put them in there. So one, and you can space them out if you like. Two, three. Okay, and I have my popsicle stick here. So then after that, just kind of stick them in about half an inch down. It, it's not really an exact thing. You don't need to like be exact with it, but you're pretty much going to stick it about half an inch down. Okay, so what I recommend is you keep them in a section. So here I have my four tomato plants, my Bonnie Best. That's all I really want. Um, so I will um, just have those four in, in this section. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just label, kind of try to label them here like this. So that way I know, okay, over here in this section is my Bonnie Best. And then on this, these four on this section, I'll put another piece of tape with whatever I'd be planting over there. Okay, so I recommend masking tape or if you, I didn't have masking tape, so I'm just using painter's tape, but I do recommend masking tape for that. Okay, so that's the Bonnie Best tomatoes. So again, um, just take your popsicle stick and kind of stick them in. Okay. 
we are done planting all of our seeds for now. So we're gonna cover these up. We're just gonna snap the lid on, okay? And of course, everything's labeled. We've labeled as we were going. And so we're just going to, now does the lid snap on? I think it does. Oops. So it looks like it just sits there. I'm not sure, yeah, it looks like it just sits there. It doesn't snap on. Um, so we're gonna leave it like this until the seeds germinate. So once we see the seeds the start growing and we see a little green poking out of the soil, we're going to lift the cover off and then let it let the air circulate and let it grow from there because it does need uh, uh, carbon dioxide to to grow. Overall these peat pellets were really easy to use and um, I highly recommend them. Again I'm gonna link them down in the description box below if you want to grab some of those. I'll also be making garden markers for these plants so stick around make sure you subscribe so then you won't miss that video so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you come along on this journey with me on our garden experiment thank you guys so much for watching take care and I'll see you in the next video be well on your journey to home sweet home bye for now